then never fear, the Bioneer is here. And so firstly, I'd like to say Happy New Year a bit early to you. Thank you so much for watching this channel this year. I greatly appreciate it. Somehow we made it this far. I just want to sincerely thank you so much for taking the time to watch the videos. I hope you all had a nice Christmas. I never want to hear a Mariah Carey song ever again until next year. If you don't know The Bioneer, it's a very interesting channel. I bought and read his book, Super Functional, extremely interesting. And by the way, I am filming this on the phone because apparently now phones have cameras like cameras. And so this is available in Ultra HD for those of you who want to see my wrinkles. But I need to get something out of the way first. It's not weird that he goes into the forest, takes off his shirt, does bicep curls and films it. Not weird, okay? And sorry, I have to because I have affection for his channel. The man must have insulated nipples because going topless outside in England, let's just say it's not exactly warm. And so in all seriousness, I wouldn't describe his channel as textbook. And that's kind of what makes it interesting. It is very much the exploration of ideas. So a quick disclaimer with any video like this where I discuss another channel's video, I'm not telling you to do exactly what he does or do as much as he does. And of course, think critically because that is healthy. But he is someone who is genuinely dedicated to improving human performance of all kinds. And he's not just some type of fake natty android selling you belly fat programs and so i'm just presenting ideas for you for your discussion and as always please apply concepts to your needs it's absolutely vital but for sure the bioneer is someone that can help you in your fitness journey but of course please go and watch the original video for full context i've referenced it down below it's the only reference down below so you can easily find it and so i recently made videos on maximizing muscle growth glute training science and also training to failure but the bulk of what i discussed in those videos involved dynamic contractions the eccentric and concentric which are of course found Fantastic for muscle growth. Much better. Any excuse to bring out the gun show. And so I will always present dynamic contractions with progressive overload as highly effective for muscle growth. And the Bioneer on his channel also communicates that throughout many videos. But of course, there are other attributes to train, not just muscle growth per se. So what about the ugly sister, the isometric contraction? That is what I call anabolic hydration. The concentric is shortening the muscle, eccentric is lengthening the muscle, isometric is staying in one place, but still contracting, still exerting force. Bruce Lee's unique isometric training routine explained, overcoming isometrics. If you've been watching this channel for a while, then you'll have heard me talk about overcoming isometrics. So overcoming isometrics are a fantastic tool you can use to build more strength and power and control without necessarily piling on more muscle mass. So I thought today it'd be cool to take a look at a example of an overcoming isometric program used by none other than Bruce Lee himself. Okay, and so Bruce Lee used this, so let's explore if it has any decent applications or support for purpose. You have your yielding isometrics, which is what many people instantly think of. When they think of isometrics, this means like holding weights in position until you start to fail. Essentially, it means that you're leaving some strength still on the table. You're not exerting yourself maximally. With an overcoming isometric, the whole idea is that you're pushing or pulling as hard as you possibly can against an immovable force. So that might mean loading up a bench press to 200 kilograms, lying underneath it and just trying to push. So overcoming isometrics are the key discussion here. But briefly, I also want to state that yielding isometrics do have potential health benefits for your tendons. Properly executed, dynamic, eccentric, and isometric training can improve tendon structure and function. Training with isometric contractions has been purported to have several advantages. First, isometric training allows for a tightly controlled application of force within pain-free joint angles in rehabilitative settings. Second, isometric training provides a means to induce force overload as maximal isometric force is greater than that of concentric contractions. Third, a practitioner who understands the physical demands of a sport may be able to utilize isometric training to focus on specific weak points, in a range of motion that can positively transfer to performance and injury prevention. And here's an example of specifically overcoming isometrics. And I'm just gonna try and push it as hard as I can. And that's your overcoming isometric and you hold that position. So why do this? Why look like you have constipation whilst training? So why is this useful? Well, essentially with an overcoming isometric, what you're doing is you're performing a one rep maximum or as far as your nervous system is concerned, you're performing a one rep maximum. Whether you're pushing against the maximum that you can lift or whether you're pushing against something you can't lift, you're still exerting force. You're still calling on your body to recruit that kind of strength. Now we're not gonna get the same kind of muscle damage because we're not going through the range of motion. There's no eccentric phase and we're not going to load the body with so much weight. So it's not going to brace the core in the same way or build bone density. However, we'll get a lot of the same benefits in particular when it comes to neural drive. 
because you're telling your body it needs to recruit as much strength as possible. That was a long clip I used, but I wanted to give the full nuance and context of what he was saying. And so some vital caveats there. Of course, external loads with dynamic contractions are hugely effective. And so don't think of overcoming isometrics as replacing your dynamic contractions or being better than your dynamic contractions. They're just another option for you. And of course, because they don't contain the concentric or eccentric phase, isometrics do have limitations to them. The big limitations of overcoming isometrics is because you're in just one position, you're not strengthening yourself through the entire range of motion. So if you're using an overcoming isometric here, say with a chain attached to the floor, then that's the only position where you're gonna build strength. And slightly off focus, but we do have evidence from Vygotsky et al that using isometrics between sets may be beneficial for your thickness in your quads. When you lift weights to do so, you recruit motor units. I've talked about this a lot. They contain slow and fast twitch muscle fibers. And depending on how heavy the weight is, you're gonna recruit more and bigger motor units to move that load. With an overcoming isometric, what you're able to do is to practice sending that signal to the body to recruit as many large motor units as possible. And as you practice this, as you rehearse it, you're going to be cementing the neural pathways that make that possible. And there's also an article I came across by this guy, Graham Morris, who was showing overcoming isometric applications if you have to train at home, which of course, where gyms can be shut at the moment or where there may be a limit in how many people are allowed in, if you are someone that is having to train at home or choosing to train at home, perhaps overcoming isometrics may be something now that you may want to consider inserting. And so one last explanation behind what Adam is projecting in relation to overcoming isometrics. Studies looking at overcoming isometrics show that they demonstrate significantly greater activation in the muscles as compared with max effort through a regular lift. And another very interesting study looked at overcoming isometrics on a leg extension machine, and that showed that it could also decrease co-activation of antagonistic muscles. Some all-time strongmen such as Maxic talk about how relaxing antagonistic muscles is one of the keys to amazing strength. This not only trains your ability to recruit more motor units during an exercise, within a single muscle, it can also help you to better perform the movement using the coordination of different muscles. Okay, and so what did Bruce Lee do? So he starts with a press lockout where the bar is above him and he's doing a military press just three inches away from his lockout position. Then he moves on to a press start where he's pushing it up from his chin position. Then he has a rise on the toes where the bar is on his shoulders as though he's doing a squat and he's gonna do like a, a calf raise. Then you have a pull where the bar is six inches above his hips. Then he had a parallel squat where he'd get into parallel then try and squat a weight that wouldn't move. Then he'd perform a shoulder shrug where the weight is now lower down still and he's trying to shrug it upwards. Then a dead weight lift as he called it where the weight was two inches below the knee and he'd try and deadlift it. And then he also had a quarter squat where he'd try and squat from a quarter position. To do these, bear in mind Bruce Lee wouldn't use a really heavy barbell obviously because you just crush yourself, you can't hold that position and it be an overcoming isometric. Instead, what you do is he put the barbell in the rack, use the pins to set it in place so it wouldn't move, and then just try and push or pull against it. And the problem here, as Adam explains, is you may not have you know the right equipment to do this, especially if not training in a gym. So here are some equipment and exercise variations and ideas for you. One is to come somewhere like this and then just find trees and logs that you can try and pull and lift or push and Obviously, you're going to be a little bit dependent on what you find on the day. Or alternatively, you can use a device such as the IsoFlow from Bullworker. And using these creatively, you can actually create all kinds of different positions to emulate an overcoming isometric with a barbell. You could even attach these to a bar. Or as he shows here, this is a piece from a desk or rope even. So basically anything you can find where you can create an overcoming isometric. I kind of like the bare bones approach to training in some senses. You don't have to spend a lot of money on equipment. Of course, ready to use equipment can be convenient and, and efficient to use, but there may be things lying around the house that you can use and that's not necessarily wrong. So if you were using overcoming isometrics on your biceps, you'd probably wanna use three different positions in order to make sure you're strengthening the entire range of motion. What Bruce Lee seems to have done here is to not think in terms of individual muscles, but in terms of the full body. And if you look at what he's done, he's done positions all the way down and all the way up. It's almost like he's gone through a kind of clean where he's pulled the weight up all the way over his head and he's pushing up as well. And he's doing pushes and pulls at each position and this is just a really interesting way to break down the body and to potentially strengthen yourself all the way through it. And so in conclusion, overcoming isometrics are a protocol for you to consider. They have much application potential. When it comes to isometrics, we do have evidence into the recruitment of muscle. For some of you watching, you may never want to use overcoming isometrics. You know, that's fine. For some of you watching, it may suit you. 
And again, that's fine. Bionair discusses overcoming isometrics a lot in his channel. So I really wanted to express this and communicate this to this community because I do find it intriguing. And of course, please watch the original video where you'll get far more in-depth information. Let me know what you think. I'm James Linker. I'll see you soon. Another tip is to build up to this. Take your time and listen to your body. This is intensive. And if you get the wrong movement, you could easily pull something, strain something, or even pass out from exertion. So build up to it slowly. It's a really useful skill, a really useful tool once you get the hang of it. But make sure you've got experience with these movements first and don't go hell to leather right away.